This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be discussing the difference between none and none type, because there is a difference and you should know about this if you are programming in Python. But before we jump into the difference, let's cover what none represents in Python. Well, at its core, none represents the absence of a value. And in a lot of other languages, usually you'll see this being referred to as null. It literally means there's no value there. And that's not the same as inserting zero or false. None means that there's absolutely nothing there. For example, you might have a program that requires you to select a user. And here we're going to create an optional, which will be of type string and none. So that's how you create an optional type. And initially this value will be set to none because there was no user selected. Now, if we were to print user selected, what we will get back, again, it's the wrong script, but if we run the right script, we're going to get none back obviously because that's what we assigned to user selected. And it's good to do this because if you ever have to check whether there's a user selected, then you can print, let's say user selected, else please select a user. So right now, if we run this, it's going to ask us to please select a user because we have no user selected. But if we have Luigi one, two, three, then it's going to print the value because user selected is not none. There's actually a value there, which tells the if statement that it can proceed with this block of code. And it's important to know that none is a singleton and will always be guaranteed to return the same instance, which makes it very easy to check for. So if you ever have to check whether a value is none, the way you would do it is by, well, first I'm going to print it so we can see what we get out of it but we can check that user selected is none. We use is to compare against none. So if we were to run this, we're going to get false back. But if this actually happened to be none, we're going to get true back. And you will see this commonly being used in if is not none checks, none checks. And actually it just might be easier to write that out. So if user selected is not none, then you can execute whatever code you want. We're checking that this value is not none before trying to use it, which is the safest way to use a value, which is optional. Something else that you should know about none is that it is returned by default when you create a function and don't specify a return type. For example, here we might type in say hello as a function and it will take a name of type string. And I'm just going to explicitly say that this returns none. This is a type annotation and you're not required to use it. But again, every function that you create that does not specify a return value will return none by default. So here we'll just print the F string of hello name. So if we were to use this, we can add in Mario. And when we run that, it will say hello Mario. But if we try to get the value from this, so we type in value equals say hello Mario and print value. What you're going to notice is that we're going to get none back by default because we did not specify a return type in our function. And it doesn't matter whether we add this type annotation or not, we're still going to get none back. I just prefer to add this because it tells the developer explicitly that this is a function that only executes code. It doesn't return anything other than none. Okay, so we wasted a lot of time talking about what none is. So now let's move on to none type. What exactly is none type? Well, simply put, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the type of none. So if we were to print type of none, what we're going to get back is the none type. And to actually use it, we're going to have to import from types the none type. So once again, we can create something called user selected of type string and none. So it's an optional and that's going to equal none initially. Next, we can print, let's say the type of user selected and we can print the type of user selected is none type. So now we can compare that the type of user selected is of type none type. And if we were to run this, you'll see that first of all, it's going to print that our variable is of type none type, which means that once we perform that check, we're going to get true back because the type of user selected is indeed of type none type. Another way you can check is by printing or you don't have to print, but using is instance with user selected and none type. 
So now you can check whether a variable is of type non type. And if you were to run that, you're going to get true because right now user selected is of type non type. As soon as we add Mario, we're going to get false back because it's no longer of type non type. Although there's still one thing I don't really understand that well, and that is why we can't just type in non type here because non type is the type of none, which in my opinion should make it so that none is recognized as non type. But if we were to do this, our code editors is going to complain that we expected type string and non type, but we got none instead. I think this is quite silly, but I would love to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below about this. Not that that really matters because conventionally we use none as non type anyway. And I find this to be much more clean than using non type. So just to sum up this video, non type is the type of none. It's as simple as that. And it's good to know what it is because you're probably going to notice this in your error messages when you are programming. I believe if you were to type in print float of none, that this would actually give you an error that the argument must be a string or a real number, not none type. Exactly. So you're going to end up seeing it here and there. And there aren't really many reasons to use none type explicitly from a day to day basis in Python. At least as far as I know, I have never used it explicitly for the past four years. But I would love to hear if any of you experienced programmers in the comments section have used it for anything recently. Otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.